Yeah, so, so high level overview, we're really proud of this study. We had a great group of collaborators, six different sites throughout Ohio and Michigan. So it's nice to see Ohio and Michigan playing nicely together in this study. Um, but we had a great group of collaborators and really what we wanted to ask, you know, when you look, when you think of FDA registry trials, you see a drug usually studied against something that it might not be used against in the real world. And so what we wanted to do is we, we really believed that the novel beta-lactam agents are superior therapies to what we used to use for patients. We know that the polymyxins are, are suboptimal and that's being a little bit kind. Uh, they actually come with a lot of harms for our patients, but you really need that real world evidence to show that these new therapies are better than the old therapies that we used to. And so what we did is the six sites we all put in about 20, 25 cases per site and we compared outcomes. So these are patients who had drug resistant pseudomonas infections and if you look at our cohort, if you look at the patient population, it's a pretty sick population. About two thirds of the patients had pneumonia, about 50% were in the ICU, almost half of the patients had either severe sepsis or septic shock and what we did is we compared 100 patients who had these nasty infections due to drug resistant pseudomonas, 100 patients who got ceftolazane tazobactam based therapy, and we compared them to 100 patients who got either a polymyxin or aminoglycoside based regimen. So to kind of conceptualize that before we had ceftolazane tazobactam, that's what we used to give these patients because that's all we had. And so we compared outcomes in those patients and what we found was that two big findings that I'd say we found. The first is that patients who got ceftolazane tazobactam were two and a half times more likely to have a clinical cure, so to have a positive outcome in that situation. We didn't see a mortality difference between the two groups, although there was a little bit of a signal. We were really underpowered to completely look at that. That wasn't our intent. And really the primary thing that we wanted to look at was safety. We know that the polymyxins and aminoglycosides both can be toxic antimicrobials for our patients, so we wanted to look at the instance of acute kidney injury. And bottom line is that 12 point, if you got a polymyxin or an aminoglycoside, you were 12 and a half times more likely to develop acute kidney injury than ceftolazine tazobactam. So basically, if you do the fancy math and you start to do some of the things that we say, it's a number needed to treat for a clinical cure of septolazine tazobactam of five and a number needed to harm with polymyxins or aminoglycosides of four. So you're not talking about needing to treat a lot of patients to have a positive outcome on your patients. And I, so I, I really am hopeful that these data will support the other data that are out there that will really get people to move away from these kind of lesser therapies. So biggest takeaway from the septolazine tazobactam study, I think that what, if you're gonna keep one thing in your mind, number needed to treat five for a clinical cure, number needed to harm with AKI if you give them a polymyxin or aminoglycoside is four patients. So every four patients you unnecessarily treat with a polymyxin or aminoglycoside, you're going to send one of them into acute kidney injury.